Welcome to the Teapot Reads. I'm the Teapot. This is what I am currently reading, and I am so happy to see you today. Hello, and welcome to another Empire of the Vampire video. Today we're joined by Tank. Tank, do you have anything to say? He has nothing to add. He is going to be here. I have his toy. Um, <laughs> it's Bugs Bunny, but he ripped the arms off. He's very invested in the microphone. He thinks it's a toy. We're doing another Empire the Vampire review. This is my spoiler review. So if you have not read this book, I really recommend navigating away from this video and going and checking out my spoiler free review that I posted yesterday. In that video, I made it pretty clear that this was a five star read for me. One of my favorite fantasy books that I have read all year and in several years and going to be a pinnacle of just the fantasy genre. It is a fantastic book. This video is so I can go a little more into the nitty gritty things that I really liked. Um, there's not really a lot I disliked, and in fact, there's only one thing to talk about, but it's very spoilery, so I had to wait until this video, but I really don't have bad things to say, so I'm really just going to be talking about the nitty-gritty, the twists and turns I didn't see coming, what I want from the next book, all that kind of stuff, but like I said, if you haven't read this book, I really Really, 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 really don't recommend watching this video because right off the bat, I'm going to spoiler the or spoil spoil is the actual verb. I'm going to spoil the biggest twist in the book. And I personally think that if you go into the book knowing this, you're really missing out on a great, great experience. Um, it's also a spoiler that I think the internet is going to have a hard time keeping. So if if you're still here and you're still like considering it, do, like stop, stop watching this video. Go watch the non-spoiler one. If you've read the book, keep keep watching. Stick around. If you if you're still here and you haven't read the book, I mean, it is your decision. I respect that. And at this point, you've had enough warning. So. We're just going to get into it. I'm not going to go over what the book is about because ideally you're here because you've read it. Um, I'm also probably going to base this around characters. If you saw my non-spoiler review, you know that the characters are what I was most invested in. And that is how I tend to be with most books. So it's easy for me to structure reviews around the characters. So without further ado, let us get into it. First of all... Dior is a girl. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I loved it so much. It was such a good, such a good twist. Um, mostly because I just, there was nothing to make me expect it. She falls into so many tropes of what we see of young male characters in fantasy, the feisty young male characters, and she fits those tropes beautifully, and Jay Kristoff is just like, you thought she was a boy, but actually, female characters can be just the same and you can love them just as much, like, fuck your double standard, Dior's a woman, I loved it, I loved her, honestly, love to see female characters in general. But I had already bonded with Dior before the reveal and then finding out she was a woman. I was like, holy fuck, I love her. <laughs> I want to be her. Um, she's amazing. She is just the standout character. I, I, I've reread a lot of her scenes, like just gone through and reread her scenes because I love her. I just, I don't know how to express it more except that she's easily my favorite character in the book. Uh, even before, it, like, the reveal, she was creeping up there. I was like, I love this character. He's great. He's great. And then it's like, she's a woman? Like, fuck me. Yes. Like, yeah, my new favorite, probably female fantasy character. I'm not gonna lie. I've been racking my head to see if there's, like, another one. I think previously it was probably Aelin because I really love Aelin. But definitely Dior is taking the top spot. So... I, I just, she's great. I think that twist is going to be really hard for the online community to keep a secret because fan art's going to be a thing. It's going to be a really easy slip of the tongue. It's not easy to hide. You know, it's not easy to talk about some of the latter half of this book and keep using, you know, he, him pronouns, I guess. Especially the closer we get to book two, the 
quicker this is going to spill out. So I do feel really bad for anyone who gets spoiled for this because I thought the twist was really great. I also think this is like part of a current trend of setting up expectations and making you think a character is male and then turning them around to be female. Now, this can be done in a really baity way, and I don't really like that. I'm going to use The Midnight Lie as a good example of another book that doesn't do it in a baity way, but just sets up expectations of the reader that you're reading about a male character, and then t you're like, oh, it's a female character. Like, all my preconceived expectations of how this character is acting also aligns with the fact that it would be a he um but it's a she and i really like this trend i think it's great i think it really helps continue cracking the mold that strong female characters have been placed into the one problem i had with this book came before the dior twist the reveal in my opinion still is a bit split on it and it's a question of consent. So Sersha and Dior have a relationship, which I love. The two things are, before the reveal, there's a pretty big age gap between them. Obviously, that's not the case later. I think it's like halved. The age gap that we thought there was is halved. However, does Sersha know Dior is a woman? I would assume yes, because it seemed like they were rather intimate, but we don't actually know. And if she didn't, that does seem like a major consent violation. So I hope that's cleared up at some point in text. Because that's the only thing that really bothered me about this book was possible consent violation. But we also just don't know. Uh, and possibly I just missed a line that explained that actually Sorsha did know. But I was really hoping for some sort of explanation there. Because otherwise, yeah, that's kind of a major consent violation. But this is just book one in a trilogy. I think there's definitely room to explain that and be like, oh yeah, no, Sersha knew. It's just like one line is all that's needed. That being said, let's like, let's go into Sersha and let's go into character deaths. Reading the book, especially the quest storyline, you know, you have to know that these quest characters have to die. They have to die because the major plot point of the quest storyline is the relationship between Gabe and Dior and that Master Apprentice storyline. And so they had to die, which meant, you know, saying goodbye to some really great characters. And obviously Chloe doesn't die there. I didn't, oh my god, in my notes, I didn't put down talking about the, like, the, the massacre and the attempted sacrifice of Dior. I just, like, did, <laughs> I didn't have this, the, I, I couldn't talk about it. Um, I liked that Chloe got to return to the living-ish and um, then become like a villain. I really appreciated that for the hot second that that happened. But, you know, saying goodbye to Sersha, Perafa, and Bellamy. I, I wasn't too sad about Perafa or Bellamy, but Sersha, oh, that fucked me up. I knew she had to die. I knew it. And it still fucked me up. I think of those three, she was the one who had the most compelling storyline on her own, especially like her like own personal quest with the magic forest thing going on like I have to that has to be resolved somehow right you're not just like throwing that in there to mess with me right I actually I think it is going to be resolved I really think Sersha is going to come back as a vampire that's a terrifying thought um and Phoebe her lion maybe they can both be like vampires that'd be pretty badass <laughs> not gonna lie but it would fuck me up a lot emotionally I think I wasn't super invested in her and Dior's relationship I wasn't not invested. I just wasn't particularly invested, I think, because we just are so focused in Gabe's head that any relationship outside of Gabe's head is less tender outside of, like, Aaron and Baptiste, okay? I, <laughs> my heart, I really thought they were going to die. I really thought they were going to die and would have rioted a little bit. Let them live at least until book two. I... I hope they make it through the trilogy. I think it's a trilogy. Maybe it's longer than that. I just hope they make it. They have such a good life in Avalon, which is definitely supposed to be Avalon. I see what you're doing there. But yeah, Sersha. I think we're going to see Vamp Sersha. It's my thought. Maybe Vamp Sersha and Phoebe. That would be fucking awesome. Have to talk about the biggest character deaths, which is Gabe's family, which again, it was one of those things like you knew it was coming. 
Okay, you knew it was coming, but I just, I was wrecked by it. It was hard to read. I didn't think it would be that hard to read. It was hard to read. It was emotionally destructive. It was awful. Okay, awful. I appreciated it. I thought it was well done, well written. Anything that manages to make me feel like that is fantastic. I was wrecked by that scene. I also, here's another theory, and I could have glossed over it because I did read this section pretty quickly because I was just like, I have to get through it. But do we have confirmation that Patience, Gabe's daughter, is dead? Do we have confirmation? Or was the Forever King just like, I'm going to take her away from you? Like, could she still be alive? Could she be a vampire? I'm pretty sure Jay Kristoff has said that his favorite vampire from Interview with the Vampire is Claudia, a little girl vampire. So patience is this possible (laughs) that'd be very fucked up but in a world with the undead you can do a lot of fucked up things so do we know she's dead i don't think we do astrid is dead that was so you know i was really curious about those interactions he was having with her and i really thought she was a vampire but she's dead That's really sad. I really loved her character. I am another thing that I'm hoping for in the next book is more of their like teenage young adult years together. I think we're going to get it. It glossed over a lot of things, but I feel like there's still a lot of backstory to be covered. Even part of what is glossed over because Gabe has a deal with the royal court or whatever now. He's like a knight. So that'll probably add some tension. It's going to be really heartbreaking to see her again, though, after seeing her death. So... That was rough. That was really rough. And the last character deaths I really wanted to talk about, though. Okay. Uh, Excuse me. Excuse me, Jay. Um, Can I call you Jay? Uh, Is this what you're doing with the ponies we've all been giving you? (laughs) Just killing them? Let me find the first scene. Because this is, I think, the most shocking. Just because I didn't didn't expect it to come. We have, like, all this buildup with um, Justice. Is that the horse's name? And... Then it's fucking killed. What the fuck, man? You cunt. <laughs> and chapter one and part two is even called Injustice. We get all this build up for this horse. I'm just going to read you this scene. It's early in the book. It's um, page like 111 in the arc. But Justice charged on through the deadwood, weaving through the mushroom thickets at full gallop. His hooves were thunder and his heart was dauntless. And we soon left those bloodless bastards in our wake. We burst from the woods a while later, damp with sweat, out into the rain. A chill gray valley lay below us, thick with fog. A little way northeast, I could see a dark ribbon of road in the gloom. A few miles beyond lay the river ford in safety. I patted Justice as he galloped down into the valley, murmured into his ear, My brother, my best boy. And then his hoof found the rabbit hole. His forelegs sank into the earth. The joint snapped with an awful crack, his screams filling my ears as we fell. I smashed into the ground, felt something break, gasping with agony as I rolled to rest against a rotten stump. I rose up from my boy's wreck, hands and chin blacked with mud, looking at the shank of bone torn through his fetlock as he tried to rise, brave to the last. Oh no, I breathed. No, no. Justice screamed again, wild with agony. I turned my face to the heavens above, a familiar rage swelling in my chest. I looked down at my friend, my arm bleeding, throat tightening, heart breaking. He'd been with me since that first day in San Michon. Through blood and war, fire and fury, 17 years, he was all I had left. Now, this. I'm going to, like, stop there because <laughs> it's a long, horrible scene. Um, but, yeah, he has to kill Justice because put the horse out of his misery. Um, it's even more heartbreaking after you see his family getting killed and you're like, oh, yeah, Justice really is all he had left. Um, but, oh, my God, I think this was the most surprising character death because it came the most out of nowhere. And then Lady Jezebel, is that what he, he ends up renaming her? But Jezebel, she dies too. Like, vampire horses? Have we seen those? I don't think so. That would be cool. Please give me some vampire ponies. Redeem yourself and give... I apparently really want these undead animals. They'd just be pretty dope. So I talked about how Gabe was. Gabe. Dior. Dior was the best reveal um, in the book. You know a lot about her. You know, going into it, he's talked about it. The authors, who I mean, when I say he, talked about it. uh, Back of the book, I think, talks about it, how... Dior is the holy grail, basically. And first of all, that's very um, Da Vinci code. (laughs) Was totally into that whole, like, church thing. But there were other reveals, especially towards the end. And first of all, the frame story. So you get the sense that Gabe is cowed and less of than what he was. 
um, for most of the book during the frame story. Like he's somewhat broken. He's somewhat weaker. And then he attacks the vampire who's been taking his story. He's planning something. And I'm so excited to see what it is. I don't know why I didn't expect him to fight back. I really, I think it was just okay with him being a broken mess. I was like, yeah, he's going to be executed. Okay. But it was actually like, maybe not that. Maybe he's got some grand plan. So that was cool. Really liked that. Another reveal, Liath, Liath, Leith. I'm so sorry. I do not know how to pronounce her name. She was a very cool character. She's Gabe's sister. I loved that. <laughs> That was such a good reveal. I am really confused, though, because she ties into Gabe's magic, um, and we don't know much about his magic. Even him during the quest storyline does not know much about it. So I'm assuming that's going to be a major investigation in book two. But how does she involve in that, I guess? I didn't think vampire... Well, no, I mean, vampires can do magic. I guess I'm like theory crafting right now actively in front of you. But I thought like the half vampire thing didn't pass down to women. And also I thought she was like not a bastard. I'm I don't know. Does that mean it's like passing down through Gabe's mother then? This is me just asking questions. This isn't like part like <laughs> this is I'm sure these will be answered opens a lot of interesting doors. I really liked the reveal and I liked how I didn't realize it at first. It wasn't until I like sat down like the next day that I was like, what does this actually mean though? If she can do magic, like what does this mean? Um, and I think that was it for reveals that I wanted to talk about. There's a lot of little things like Dior being nearly sacrificed. Like how are they going to take care of the sun? Are they going to bring it back? Are they like in the frame store? They haven't. So what happens next? I don't know. Um, I don't know what the main the main arch is going to be for the next book. I'm excited. Like, I just, I don't know where it could go. Because this one had a very clear-cut mission from beginning to end. And the end doesn't necessarily set up a quick, clean, clear-cut mission. So, 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 so what do I need from book two? I need it to be here already. <laughs> it just came out. I'm sorry. I don't actually, I don't mind waiting. I'm a very patient person, especially when it comes to books and series that I really love. I'm very patient. It's not a problem. What I need, though, is Ash Drinker. To have more screen time, I really want to know how she and Gabe meet. I want to see her in her prime. I don't, I didn't mention it really in the other review, I don't think, but I love that she's broken. I just think it's such an interesting element to bring to a magic sword, like a broken magical sword. So I need more of her. She was another delight. I need Dior to be happy at least for a little bit. We get a little bit of it, like when she gets a new jacket. So... I mean, just more, just a couple more scenes. It doesn't have to be the whole book. She can end on an unhappy note. It could be horribly tragic. You could rip my heart out. I just want a little bit of happiness for her, <laughs> please. Um, answers. Obviously, I need some answers. This is it. I'm pretty sure he said trilogy. I'm hoping for more. I feel like I could live in this world forever, but I want some answers. I need some answers. More vampires. I think it's clear I want some undead animals. But I want to see some more morally gray vampires. I know that vampires in this world are pretty evil. And I'm 100% for that. I love evil vampires. Like, that is the best. They're scary. But I would also like to see some maybe who are conflicted, who don't like being vampires. Um, or try, like other vampires like fighting vampires. Like, Leith was a good was a good intro to that. I would love to see some morally gray, but still evil vampires. So that's what I want from book two. That's what I need. And those are my notes. Those are my thoughts. I, this is less a review and more discussion. So I'm probably going to title this discussion. If you didn't see my first review, I gave this book a five out of five stars. I thought it was amazing. Fantastic. One of the best fantasy books to come out of modern day fantasy writing. I will be buying this book for everyone I think can handle it. So I loved it. If you have read this book, let's talk down below. I need to talk to people about this because I'm just like out of my mind with how much I love it. So please, let's discuss. But that is it for the video. That's all I have to say. If you want to hear more of me talking more of just my thoughts on books in general, definitely subscribe. I would love to have you here. And thank you to every single one of you who has subscribed up until now. At the time of filming, I'm just shy of 100 subscribers, which is insane 
absolutely crazy. Don't know what to do with that like information. I'm like blown away. Thank you so much, every single one of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But this is where I say goodbye. So goodbye. I hope you have a great day. I hope if it is cold where you're at, you are staying warm. If it is warm where you're at, you are staying comfortable. And most of all, I hope you're reading a great book. I will see you guys next time. Bye.